Greetings, and welcome to Saint of the Week, the show where we choose one saint's feast day from this week and discuss their life and their impact on the church. The saint for this week is Saint Julie Billard, whose feast day is April 8th, this Sunday. Marie Rose Julie Billard was born on July 12th, 1751 in Cruvy, France. She was the sixth of seven children born into a well-to-do farming family. She showed an interest in religion and helping the poor and sick from a young age, and had memorized the catechism by the age of seven. Her progression in spiritual matters was so great that the parish priest allowed her to receive her first communion and be confirmed at the age of nine. When Julie was 16, her family lost their money, and she had to find work to help support them. In her spare time, she would teach the catechism and the Bible to the children and the farm workers. At the age of 22, her father was shot and nearly killed by an unknown assailant. Witnessing the attack shocked Julie's nervous system badly, and she eventually experienced paralysis of her lower limbs, which left her an invalid for 22 years. In 1789, the French Revolution struck, and Julie opened her home as a hiding place for priests that remained loyal to the church. Revolutionary forces tried to hunt her down, but with the help of friends, she was smuggled out of Cuvier in a hay cart. She had to flee five more times over the next three years, despite her paralysis and growing pain. This was a time of spiritual growth for Julie, however, as she experienced a vision where she saw Calvary surrounded by women in religious habits and heard a voice that said, Behold these spiritual daughters whom I give you in an institute marked by the cross. While Julie was hiding in Amiens, she met Francois Blanc de Bourdon, an aristocratic woman who shared Julie's interest in caring for and teaching the poor. Together, in 1803, they laid the foundation for the Institute of the Sisters of Notre Dame, a religious society whose main charism would be the salvation of poor children. The next year, Julie's confessor invited her to pray with him a novena to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. His unspoken intention was her cure, and on June 1st, 1804, Julie was able to walk again for the first time in 22 years. Julie and Francois, accompanied by two other women, made their first vows of religion on October 15, 1804, and Julie was appointed Mother General of the Order. Choosing as their life work the Christian education of girls, they started by founding a free school for girls living in poverty. They also opened day schools for middle class girls and academies for the wealthy, which helped provide money for the free schools. The Sisters of Notre Dame began to spread as their con convents were established in various towns across France and Belgium. Trouble came about when the congregation's confessor tried to change the rule and constitutions of the order. He exercised his influence over the Bishop of Amnion until the sisters were finally forced to leave. Julie allowed each sister to choose whether she wanted to stay or to go, and all but two elected to go with her. That winter, in 1809, the mother house of the Sisters of Notre Dame was then moved to Namur in Belgium, and has remained there ever since. In the remaining seven years of her life, Julie spent her time teaching her spiritual daughters in the way of piety and the interior life. She continued to establish communities, making many long and toilsome journeys to do so. In 1815, Belgium became a battlefield for the Napoleonic Wars, and Julie taxed her already weak health by ceaselessly caring for the sick and wounded. She fell ill in January of 1816 and died peacefully on April 8th in Namur. She is a patron saint of bodily ills, disease, and against poverty. Julie Biller was best known for her deep love for the poor and for her call to teaching, a mission that, she, that her order continues to carry out today. Even so, it was said that she saved more souls by her inner life in union with God than by her outward apostolate, demonstrating that having a personal relationship with Christ ourselves is the best tool for helping others. St. Julie Billar, pray for us. Our honorable mentions for this week are St. Acacius, St. Michael de Sanctis, St. Gemma Galgani, St. Julius, St. Hermengild, and St. Lidvine. And of course, there are thousands of other saints who undoubtedly have their feast days this week, but there are so many of them that there is no way we can list them all here. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Saints Week. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Peace be to you.